Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. We're back with another episode of Edgewater, Saskatchewan, and uh, we're picking up here in spring. We've got all of our crops planted here, seeded maybe I should say. And today we're going to be rolling uh, our two canola fields that we have uh, gotten seeded here since they do have a requires uh, rolling debuff here. If we look at the field, it says it needs rolling. And we are trying to uh, maximize our uh, crop productivity here. And so I went ahead and leased this roller. I don't know if the $5,000 I leased it for is going to uh, see a return in just the two fields that we have to lease. I was kind of hoping we'd be able to lease more fields. But unfortunately, that just didn't work out. We ended up... Uh, Having most of our fields grow past the stage where they could be rolled uh, too early on here, I wasn't paying attention as I was moving the time forward so we could get into planting more crops and we've missed our window. So I'm trying to uh, get the gears on this tractor to play nice with me. I've been having a little bit of a struggle with farm sim lately. It's not uh, this particular save or equipment or anything just the shifting patterns on the automatic shifting in farm sim has gotten out of control lately i don't know what's going on so i'd be curious to hear in the comments if anybody else is running into a lot of issues lately uh seems like one of the more recent patches has made that issue worse and i've got a hidden collider somewhere here i don't know if that's part of the What's your majigger here? Looks like I've got a collider hanging off the side of my roller, so I can't get so close to the fence. We'll just uh, be leaving a little bit of space over there to prevent us from having issues. That's all right. Uh, but anyway, I was saying, if you've had issues with the uh, gears, uh, I'd love to hear from you in the comments because I've been noticing more and more problems, and I don't think I'm the only one. I've talked to a few other people that have been having some problems. I've taken to manually shifting the gears even though I'm in automatic mode to kind of help the auto shifting out a bit. But uh, yeah, I might just go all the way back to manual gear shifting here is kind of what I'm thinking because this is becoming very inefficient. So let's uh, get going on the straight rows here. I'm going to set up a GPS track right quick. And then I'm going to go in and switch to manual gears because this is just ridiculous. All right, here we go. Manual gear shifting for the win. Where's my GPS track? There we go. Now we're rolling. This roller's got a nice working speed of 12 miles an hour, so I should be able to maintain this. Seems like we've found the right gear. I'm uh, hanging that roller a little far over the creek edge there than I'd probably have liked. That's all right. But yeah, this thing's going to make a short work of this field, it looks like. I've been uh, excited to be bouncing back and forth between two series here. Edgewater is a ton of fun. And I know a lot of people keep asking me, when's the next episode of this series? When's the next episode of that series coming out? And so my plan is to hopefully announce and stick to an official schedule. But I'll give a preview of that here for the Edgewater series. I should be posting episodes of Edgewater every Tuesday and Thursday moving forward. So there you have it. If uh, Edgewater is your jam then expect to see episodes on Tuesdays and Thursdays for the foreseeable future. All right, so we're coming up here to the turn. I can get up to 12 on the straightaways, but this thing is actually struggling to stay up to that as I turn. I'm going to gear down one as I go through some of this, just so I've got the uh, RPMs here to do my thing. Don't want to get too bogged down. And we are changing the ground texture here. It's an interesting rolling texture. At some point, I know Perma's Modding came out with a more uh, North American style uh, rolling texture. I should probably look into what it would take to put that here on this map. I think all I have to do is swap out one file in the map files to get uh, the rolling textures updated. That would be probably really good to do at least in this case it matches the seating texture so it doesn't look too weird 
but it still looks pretty weird. I'd like to have a uh, normal looking uh, rolling texture if I could, so maybe we'll have to uh, bust that out for the uh, next season here. I always think of these things after I'm well into a recording go oh it would have been awesome if I'd done that so we're starting to make a list we're starting to get a little bit more organized here on the channel we've been uh, getting the daily content out so I'm excited to be adding in more bells and whistles with each episode now I guess realistically I probably wouldn't need to uh, lift the roller up oh, we're way off course here let's uh, adjust our working width and get back over here where we need to be uh, probably could leave the roller down when I'm uh, turning around on the headlands. I don't know. I'm kind of curious um, what people do in real life for that. I've never actually rolled crops in real life. At the time I was farming, rolling was not really that popular. Yeah, I'm surprised at how fast we're covering this field, actually. I could have done another headland pass, maybe, but this implement is so wide, I figured we'd have enough uh, space here to do our turnarounds, but the more that I uh, actually drive this way, I'm wondering if we should have done one more pass at least. But I think since we're making such good progress, I'm just going to jump right back into our up-down rows. It's only going to take me uh, two more rounds before I've got just that little part over by the farm left and I can hit that going the other way. I suppose we should go over there and also clean up that little bit that we missed turning into our row here while we were getting the GPS set up correctly. I'll probably do that now while we're on this end so I don't have to drive this giant implement back over there at the uh, end of the process here, so we'll do that. We are just raising up uh, mostly because I go a little bit faster turning around here when I do so. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, that was the slowest lowering ever. Alright, let's try this. Gotta get used to having the manual gears back on so that I can, uh, couldn't remember how to go in reverse for a second there. We've got it, though. Trying to get everything sorted in my head here. And I'm just realizing we're running uh, through the fuel on this tractor quite quickly here. We're already down to half of a tank of fuel. Luckily, I think we do still have some, some fuel left in the Ford. I think we've got a fuel tank on that that we filled up when we were uh, um, running the combine. That combine was going through fuel a couple times uh, episode there for a little bit when we were doing our harvesting. We'll have to figure that out at some point, but... This tractor's been doing a lot of work here, and I guess realistically we've probably tackled so many fields over so many seasons here that uh, needing to fuel it up shouldn't really come as a surprise. There we go. All that tiny, tiny little spot that we missed is going to irk me. I should have backed up, but that's too much of a pain. Likewise, that bit up there, it's like, do we go all the way back up there for it? But, uh, yeah, we've got some on the curve here, too. So we'll take one more pass up uh, on the rows this way, and then we'll switch directions and finish the last bit out here heading towards the farm. And the next field is going to go so much quicker because it's just a, a small little field there on the other side of the farm. It's more we're going to drive around in a circle and be done with it pretty much I thought I had to wait for that to lower a bit we were coming in pretty fast but we just caught it before we got to the uh, actual part that needs rolling here there we go the next job we've got to do at some point here is also uh, um, spraying this field back here for sure we have uh, let the weeds get a bit out of control there I was going to actually try and run a mechanical uh, weeder over there. The um, <clears throat> There's a big one from Borgo that I thought would be a good fit for this map, given that we are in uh, Canada. But everything grew up so fast, and now the crops are too big to run a mechanical weeder through. So we won't be doing that, but maybe on these two canola fields we'll be able to lease one of those and give it a shot. Uh, because I think it'll be cheaper than using chemical to do it, the, the lease that is. 
and also um, I think it'll improve our precision farming score and our overall score determines uh, what kind of bonus we get environmental bonus for uh, selling our crops later on in the year so it's not on a crop by crop basis the environmental score affects our overall uh, uh, score and bonus when we're selling crops which means if I start doing good practices on some of my fields I'm going to see the benefits in uh, some extra money when selling all of our crops which will be nice oh my goodness the lowering speed on uh, this roller has uh, caught me twice now here I'm gonna have to back up to get this part at least um, I'll probably leave at least one of that little section I don't know that it's worth it to turn all the way around to get that little spot but it irks me when uh, I make little mistakes like that especially when I was all lined up to get it there we go there we go we have managed to roll all of this field and I am going to have to fold this thing up to get over to the other field I'm gonna bring it over here into the yard to do it just so we're not uh, wrecking anything in our field here there we go and I think we can squeeze by in front of the house here to get over there is the easiest way in fact I think that's really our only field entrance into field 50 here there might be one further down the road there oh yeah there is looking at the mini map on the main road but this is certainly the easier entrance for us and I do have to get this thing past the trees and stuff it opens up really wide there we go and let's dive into it now this field isn't showing me it does need rolling it because it's uh, been seeded in such a way and it looks like um, with the nitrogen and everything applied I don't see where I'm driving as well on uh, this particular field so that's gonna be interesting Oh, I guess it is changing the color ever so slightly so there is a difference I don't know that we're gonna need to do a whole lot with GPS in this particular field though I think what I'm gonna do is unlike the other field we might actually take this one around and do two passes just because it's a kind of a curvy field on this side and then we'll take whatever's left as straight rows along the road I'm thinking that's gonna work out the best for us here and I can't wait to get into harvest this year on this map we've got so many different crops that we're growing here right now in fact we've got more crops than we have bins to put them in I think we've got uh, two fields of canola we've got some peas we've got some lentils did we get another field I can't remember actually oh yeah we've also got the wheat which will be interesting so we've got uh, a lot going on this year we're gonna have to pick one of those crops to just sell straight up in uh, the fall there uh, because we will only be able to store three of those four crops and so it's probably gonna end up being the wheat that I choose to sell off I'm thinking uh, just because that field is in the worst shape out of all of our fields and is probably going to be worth the least amount of uh, money out of all of our crops and so it'll make sense to just uh, sell that one at a less advantage and then advan sell that one at a less advantageous cost that's a uh, mouthful to say I wouldn't say that we're necessarily taking a loss on that crop it's just we won't get as much money for it as we might have and that's the field that uh, when we bought it whoever planted that field did not do a very good job it's uh, all spotty here just uh, just up front of us there so I don't know what happened to that field but we're gonna do a much better job of uh, putting seed into that next year maybe those parts of that field will get the uh, bonus for being essentially fallow uh, since they didn't have any crops uh, planted in them maybe we'll get some kind of a bonus I can't remember how precision farming handles that and I'm looking forward to getting into a bit of a crop rotation on the farm here uh, now knowing that uh, all of the pulse crops are um, also what's it called a uh, legume I don't even know how to pronounce it but uh, the peas and lentils oh we got a backup here I missed a huge chunk 
but uh, the peas and lentils work a lot like uh, soybeans do in that uh, they're applying the nitrogen back into the soil and so we're going to be able to uh, balance things out that way a little bit better and not have to spend as much on fertilizer that's very exciting to me and so I'll be trying to rotate crops through so that uh, we're mixing things up on our fields and getting those bonuses year after year I've got just a little bit right there it's really hard to see I'm sure this isn't coming out on the YouTube video but I can just see the difference in the ground types here and where I need to roll versus where I've already rolled so we're overlapping quite a bit here on this pass but then as I get to the end there'll be just a little bit we've got to turn into uh, and get up here on the left hand side so it's all coming together it's working out beautifully here for us um, I've been using this Mandinka roller in a couple of series there's not really any other big US style rollers that I've come across yet um, I guess I'm in Canada technically right now but uh, I should say North American style rollers uh, this one seems to be the primary option I'd love to see a few more um, I thought at one point I'd seen a maybe a Dagelman roller out somewhere but I could not find it for the life of me today so I'd love to mix things up and have a couple of different uh, mods I can use uh, for stuff like this as needed but uh, I have to say I do like this Mandenko it works pretty well uh, for these larger fields I uh, haven't had too many problems with it it doesn't road very well but I don't know if that's uh, necessarily the mod or just the fact that uh, these giant rollers are kind of hard to pull down a road. All right, we're coming up here to the last little triangle here that we've got to tackle. So I'm going to try and be tricky and take it in one pass here. There we go. I think that about does it. And then I know for a fact I missed this little bit up here. There's just a little less triangle right there to get. There we go. And I believe we are all done with our rolling. Look at that. Well, let's go ahead and get this thing folded up, run it back up into the yard here. And like I said, this is a lease. So we're going to go ahead and return this straight up. Hopefully, the rolling benefit on this field was worth the $5,000 investment. If not, eh, it was at least fun and the right thing to do for our crops, I think. I've seen a lot of rolling happening up in uh, these parts with these kinds of crops. And as long as we're going to return this lease, we might as well uh, clean it up here for the dealer. All right. Well, with that out of the way, we can go ahead and actually put this tractor back in the shed and we're going to have to shuffle some stuff around a little bit I think so that we can uh, get our sprayer out we've got some spraying we need to do and I haven't uh, used this sprayer very much yet so I'm kind of curious to see how it works I think I might have used it once now so far uh, on a different uh, let's play series but uh, those would have been probably pretty small fields if I remember correctly so I'll be curious to see how it performs on a much bigger field but we got to get this JM out of the way which means I need to figure out where we've left our white there we are let's see if I can squeeze this thing out of here without running into everything under the sun oh I forget we are in manual gear mode now and I'm gonna leave I think I can get in here this is probably the wrong way to do this. I think I'm going to turn this around and put the snow blower outside. I don't think I need to keep that in the shop here. There we go. Set our field of view on just a little bit easier uh, viewing for inside the cab here. We'll run this thing around. Um, I'm trying to think of where I can put it. Let's stick it over here, maybe. I don't want to black block off our entrance into the shed there, but I think we're going to put it right alongside this. Maybe stick it back near this bush. And yeah, I think I've got to actually hop out and 
disconnect everything. There we go. Ah, that'll work. That's in a decent spot. Oh, all right. Well, let's get this grain cart moved down to here now, and we can get hooked up to the sprayer. I'm going to put it... We're going to keep it outside for a little bit while we're spraying, and we'll park everything back into the shed a little bit nicer in a little bit. But for the time being, let's just stick it over here. This should be a nice out-of-the-way spot for it. As long as I've got the tarp closed, we shouldn't uh, get too much stuff inside there. Oh, it doesn't have a tarp. Look at that. Well, we'll pull it ahead just a smidge so it's not sitting under all those leaves. There we go. I feel better about that. I don't want to be cleaning leaves and branches and stuff out of it if we end up leaving it there for a few days while we're working on everything else. There we are. All right, we're all hooked up here to the sprayer. We've even got our um, GPS and our spray controls set up in the tractor here, so we're all ready to go. We just need to call up and get some spray actually delivered here for us, and we can jump out here into the field and spray some weeds. Now, I'm not sure what the uh, difference is here. I know uh, BC Bueller put out a video on how the co-op and all that stuff works, but it looks like we've got uh, some herbicide containers here that are specific to the co-op versus the base game ones. They cost the same and they're the same size. I'm gonna try the modded one just out of idle curiosity and we'll see how it goes. And we may need to uh, go watch his video on that and figure it out. But uh, we've got that all up here and delivered from the co-op and I'm just curious to see how much this is gonna fill into our sprayer here. I'm trying to remember where the refill point is on the sprayer. I think it's on the back here. Maybe it's on the left-hand side, actually, where the chemical tanks are here. We'll try that real quick before we bust out the tools to help me remember how to fill this thing up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I should be in the zone for refilling here. I'm beginning to wonder if it's... Uh, the type of pallet here now. Well, we're gonna borrow a couple more dollars and I'm gonna get a regular pallet of herbicide here and see if that works out any differently for us. And yeah, that one fills right out of the gate, so I don't know what's going on. I have to go watch BC Bueller's video on how the co-op stuff is supposed to work because uh, that other pallet wasn't really doing anything for us. That's all right, I'm gonna buy one more pallet of herbicide as long as we're here. I'd rather go out into the field with a mostly full sprayer and not have to run back and forth. And then uh, we'll see how this goes. There we go, we're at 88%. That's a pretty decent amount of spray. Hopefully it gets us through a good chunk of this field. Now, I'm almost positive that this sprayer is not set up with the uh, precision farming uh, nozzle control. So we will be doing this the old fashioned way, i.e. just spraying everywhere. But uh, as I say that, like there is just a ton of weeds in this field, so it's probably all right. What I don't know is just uh, how big this field is gonna end up being, how much spray we're gonna end up going through. I'm really curious to see how this goes. It's a nice, big, wide sprayer, though, so let's get out here and get her turned on. And we'll attempt to take off our headland passes here, give us a good indication of where we're at on everything. Try not to put the boom out into the creek and put all the uh, chemical products straight into the water. That would uh, be bad. And yeah, we're going through spray quickly, but not uh, astronomically so. And that gives me confidence that we'll be able to finish this field up with the spray we've got in the tank. We do have a couple other fields that are probably going to need to get sprayed as well. So that's a, a good thing. 
that we've got uh, enough product to hopefully get through all that. And I'm just trying to figure out what the best uh, way is going to be to go about spraying this field. It's such a weird shape. But we'll probably end up just taking off all of these small bits and doing two times around the field. And at that point we'll be most of the way done with all of the weird bits back in here around the trees at least. I'm more nervous about being able to see where I've sprayed for the second pass around here. It's going to be interesting, and especially without the precision farming controls to help us uh, make sure we're not spraying where we've already sprayed. I'm more worried about just the efficiency of uh, what we're doing and whether or not we're going to waste a lot of product and pay a lot more money than we need to. I mean, we're only paying about five grand here for the spray we've got so far so I guess that's not too shabby you know and this is where we see how poor of a job we did when we were out here seeding we've missed uh, big sections here uh, that's unfortunate I feel like our cedar was wider than that though it's weird that we've missed the sections where we have I guess our cedar isn't that wide though so maybe that is right and then we've got more around this curve back here. Oh my goodness. All of the uh, missed potential. It's always about here in this field where I go, oh man, this field is actually bigger than I thought it was. The headland pass is so long because of uh, how oddly shaped the field is that it just feels like forever. Oh, and we made a mess up here on this field as well. Look at all of these spots. Oh goodness. How did we make such a mess on this field when we were planting? I don't know. I thought I'd even come back after course play and tried to clean up most of this, so obviously I did a very poor job of it. And as long as we're on the straight part here, this is going to be our main up and down direction. I'm going to go ahead and try and set up a GPS track here. That way we can uh, more easily get back on this path as we come back after the fact. We're doing really good on the herbicide here, though. We're only down to 74%. We got 880 gallons left to go, and we're almost all the way around the field. A little bit of overlap here as we come back by that section. I think what I'll do is finish spraying off this piece as long as we're here and then we'll go tackle the rest of the other side of the field back there i think that's going to be the easiest path forward so let's see if i can do this without putting a bunch of spray over on the wheat i somehow doubt that uh, i would use the same sprays over on our wheat as i would on these uh what are these the canola no this is our peas we're back here cranking away in the uh, other section of this field one here. And man, the sprayer is just knocking it out. We're tackling this real fast. I'm glad that we picked this thing up for this field. I was tempted to try and find a smaller self-propelled sprayer, but this thing is plenty wide for our needs and is working great with this uh, white tractor. So we're doing good. We're doing good. The field is taking a lot less time to spray here than I originally anticipated as well, so that's awesome. Originally, I was thinking the rolling was going to take a lot longer, the spraying was going to take a lot longer, and this was going to stack up on episode and episode, but honestly, I think we're going to manage to finish both of these jobs today, um, especially uh, up on this field. Like I said, we probably have some other fields that are going to need some spraying here at some point, but at least for uh, field one here, I think we can knock this out today. We got this last little piece here. We'll turn the sprayer off while we get back turned around, but I think we're just about done. We got to get these little bits uh, in all these corner spots. It's always kind of tricky to get around in here and make sense of this field, but it's looking good, looking good. So let's just whip around here and try and cover this center section. I missed a few there. Good deal. And yeah, we're burning through the herbicide. I'm going to turn it off here. I don't think any of this needs to be sprayed again. I think it's just a couple of small spots up here, which we can honestly 
take if we turn on our GPS and head down the row here. Something like this, I think, is going to find us in the right spot. And it should also finish off this pass. I think we'll be all good to go now. There we go. Well, that's all of the weeds in this field. There's I missed just a little bit up here when we turned around. I have to go up and get them because it's a pretty big uh, patch. But other than that, man, I think we're all done. There we go. Oops, turn it off, turn it off. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and run this back up to the farm. We probably could have jumped out on the road there and uh, not driven across the field, but alas, I didn't think about that. So we'll uh, make do with what we've got here, pump it up into a higher range, and get this thing dragged back up to the farm, get it all cleaned up. We will have some more spraying to do, most likely, uh, but... None of the weeds are in an extremely visible spot just yet, and so I think we're going to wait and tackle that next episode, move the time forward a little bit more, and jump into all of that uh, then. So hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, hit that like button. helps me out a lot. Well, that's all for today. Kedrick, out. But it does still want to do some weird things. I'm getting ready to just shift all the way back. Oh my goodness. That's me. Uh-oh. Don't want to put that down. It's on the other side of the fence. I would never be allowed to run a piece of equipment like this next to a fence in real life. it through that was a mistake uh.